Welcome to the farm. Welcome to the farm. I'm Justin and today we're going to get back on our Duramax head gasket replacement. In the last video I struggled. It was a rough day. Every single pot, part that we put on fought me really hard but we were able to get to the point where we got the EGR back on top of the engine. So hopefully today will go a lot better. Let's we'll start putting some parts in this thing and see how far we can get. So I'm gonna start by trying to install this air charge tube off the turbo. And I gotta try to remember how this fit in. So the turbocharged tube installed, we can go ahead and reinstall our AC compressor, which should just fit right in here. So up next, we can work on installing our driver side alternator. Up next, we're going to do the passenger side alternator. So up next we can work on installing our belt. So up next we're going to start putting the fan in.
All right, so now we can go ahead and reinstall this upper fan shroud. So up next we can put on our core support cover. So our next step is to get this EGR tube in. So up next we can install the air intake tube. So up next we're going to reinstall our air charge pipe.
and that should just slide on. And then this ring on top should just turn to lock it. Let me just do the same thing down on the bottom here. Now we can reinstall our upper radiator hose. So next we're going to reinstall the air filter tray. Now the directions or the manual I followed did not say to remove this. We did just to get access to this pipe and it made it a lot easier and it wasn't that hard to remove. So let's just go ahead and get this installed. air filter box back in. Brand new air filter. So last thing we need to install is the air intake manifold cover. So let's go ahead and install this bracket. Slide that right over the bracket. All right, now we can start adding coolant back in. Check for coolant leaks. All right, so we got the coolant topped off as far as we can for right now. I'm assuming once we start this thing and some of the air gets bled out, we'll have to top off the reservoir some more. But I think we're at the point where we're ready to hook batteries back up and try to start this thing. I am really nervous about this.
well, it's not starting. So either we missed something or there's still air in the fuel line. I don't know, I'm gonna poke around a little bit, see if I can see anything and try cranking it a few more times and see what happens. All right, so we're out here the next day now. I have done some research and we did a little poking around yesterday off camera. And I think we've come to the conclusion that our fuel system just isn't primed well enough to get it to start. And these fuel systems on these Duramaxes from what I've read last night are kind of a pain in the butt. So there is no lift pump on these things. So the only way to prime to the filter is to use that plunger and just plunge and plunge and plunge until there is no air bubbles coming out of that system. And then from the filter to the actual engine, the only way to prime that is by cranking the engine over. So there's gonna be a lot of plunging, a lot of cranking, but hopefully we can get this thing fired up today. So really, all I gotta do is make sure this bleeder screw is loose and just keep plunging until all those air bubbles stop. All right, so it's a few hours later and I had a really, really hard time priming that fuel. I ended up missing a fitting on the passenger side fuel rail, which meant I was just, every time I was plunging, all I was doing was sucking air into the system, so it wasn't purging the air out. Thankfully, it was on the passenger side on the front of the fuel rail, so I was able just to remove the intake, the intake tube, and the EGR crossover tube. So really not that big of a deal. If it would have been on the driver's side, that would have been a whole nother fiasco. So learn from my mistake. Before you put everything back together, go through and double check that you have all those fuel lines tight because that will derail you from starting this truck. But now we got the filter primed. We can go ahead and try to start the truck. We're gonna have to crank it over a few times because from what I understand, the only way to prime the actual engine side of the system is by just turning it over. So let's give it a try and see what happens. Is that a sweet sound? I am so excited. I can't, I just can't even say how excited I am this thing's running. But I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna leave the coolant cap off. We're gonna let this thing run, warm up, make sure our coolant's topped off, throw the tires back on this thing and take it for a test drive. So I've been letting this sit and warm up for a while. Got the coolant topped off, that should be good to go. Oil looks good. Doesn't look like anything's mixing, so that's good. However, I do have a fuel leak and it's dripping off the back of the motor down around the transmission. So we got something up on top that's leaking. Hopefully it's something that's easy to get at, but I'm out of time for today. I'm hot, I'm worn out, so I'll have to dig into that on a different video. But this runs, huge relief, huge accomplishment. There's no check engine light, nothing like that. It starts right up, runs beautifully. So we just gotta find that fuel leak, get that fixed, put tires on and drive it. Just want to say thank you so much for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed this, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.